Hey, what's up guys? This is Control, and this is my Dragon Warrior Guide, titled An Ode to Queen Daenerys. So, here's a deck list. The only thing that kind of stands out here is a Chill Maw inclusion. I just like this for more aggressive decks, it's very good against them. But, I would recommend playing a Dragon and Crusher over the Chill Maw if you are queuing into more control-oriented decks. The total dust cost is 10,580, and the total gold cost is 5,600, and you, you, it is required to have a third wing of LOE and the fifth wing of BRM to be able to create this deck. Why Dragon Warrior? So Fiery War X is just a very strong card, helps you assert dominance early, and it's really why Warrior shines right now. Just basically overpowered. The next is, again, overpowered minions, so stuff like Alex Reza's Champion and Blackwing Corruptor. Just very, very strong cards. Then huge tempo swings. Stuff like um, Blood to Icar Execute to remove a card like Ragnaros. Stuff like that. It's just a huge tempo swing. You use two mana, two cards to remove your opponent's huge threat. It's very, very good. Then dragons, again, just the overstated dragons, very good. Even stuff like Twilight Guardian, just one health over Ascension, but it's still very, very good. Then the cons is you do need to have dragons in your hand for a lot of the cards to be activated, like Champion, Alex Reza's Champion, sorry, and Blackwing Corruptor. They are very mad without the dragons in hand to activate them. Then the deck is also War Axe reliant in more aggressive matchups, like against Shamans. You really do want the War Axe to be able to answer the Tunnel Trog. And then another con is decks like Reno Lock that just counter us, and we have poor matchups against them. But they're not running around on ladder too too much, so it's not that big of a con. But counters do exist. Next is general advice. I'd say to play to curve out well. So always look to use all of your mana on each turn. And if you're on coin, look to coin out a two drop if you can follow up with another two drop into a three drop into a four drop. Then next, I say keep dragons for Blackwing Corruptor. If you can get that on turn five with a dragon effect going off. It's very, very good. So maybe just like not using the Twilight Guardian on turn 4 as a 2-6, hold on to it, and then use it to activate your Corruptor. And also know who the aggressor is in the matchup. So if you're playing against Aggro Shaman, you're going to be playing like your control deck, and your opponent's going to be playing like they're an aggro deck. So play accordingly, and then also if you're playing against a deck like Control Priest, which doesn't really exist right now, but if it did, then I would say play the aggressor role in that matchup and let them play the control one. And again, that just comes with playing and time. And I'll talk about that more in the individual matchup videos. But here's a general mulligan. So for most matchups, right off the bat, you want War Axe, Alex Raza's Champion, Fairy Dragon, and Finley. All very four powerful cards. All four very powerful cards, sorry. And then on coin, in most matchups, you want do, you do want Bloodsaker. And if your curve's looking good, I'd recommend keeping Frothing Berserker, cards like Twilight Guardian as well, Corcoran Elite, you know, Ravaging Ghoul. Then next up, class-specific matchups and mulligans. So uh, on your screen is going to be links to nine videos. They'll also be in the description. So what these will be is more in-depth discussions about why certain cards are included to be better and how you can win against all the meta decks right now. So I'd recommend checking those out. If you're already pretty proficient with this deck, maybe you don't need to. But if you're just struggling with a matchup or two, I'd say check the individual ones out. The individual ones out, sorry. Next up is Hero Power Rankings from Finley. So right off the bat, we've got... Warlock, so that's number one if you're playing against control decks, it's very good just being able to draw cards. And then Druid and Mage are very good in more board control matchups, so against more aggressive or mid-range decks, these hero powers shine. Then tier two, I'd say Hunter is very good against control decks, again, just for the ability to race your opponent. And then Priest is very good in more board control matchups, as you can just heal your own minions. Then tier three, we don't really want these, we prefer the five above, but if we do have to pick them, I'd pick Paladin or Shaman over Rogue. Paladin or Shaman are still okay, they help you on board, but Rogue can be useless as we can have weapons in our hand and be able to play like Fiery War X and then we'd have a dead hero power, so it's really not good, I'd almost never select Rogue. Then next up is the card analysis, so Finley is very good because, you know, tank up or, don't really, really remember the name, but gaining two armor is not very useful in, in a tempo deck, so we really want one of the other classes hero powers, that's why that's included. Executes are included because it's very good for tempo swings, it's cheap removal, and it's great. One of the reasons why Warrior shines alongside Fiery 1X. Then Blood to Icar is good because it just helps us trade up in the early game, activate Grom, yada yada yada. It's a good card. Then Slam is nice because it again allows us to, uh, to, to trade up and cycle. It's great. Then Fairy Dragon is included because it's a dragon activator, and it's very good against classes like Druid and Rogue that really want to be using spells to remove our early minions. Then Alex Rose's Champion is really one of the keys of this deck, one of the reasons it's so good. Three, uh, two mana, three, three charge on turn two is absolutely insane. And if you have it activated, it's great. If you don't, it's still a two, three, so it's not the end of the world. It's still an all right card. 
Then next is Fire War Axe. Another really key reason why Warrior is just so good right now is just this minion here. It allows you to deal with two of your opponent's early game minions for two mana. It's just great. And you get the value from that two mana on the following turn when you have a 3-1 War Axe still. So that's really why it's so good. The next Ravaging Ghoul. This is good against token decks, so stuff like Zoo, and then Token Druid, and um, and Rogue. You know, anything that really runs Violet Teacher, this deck shines against. Or sorry, this card shines against. The next is Frothing. So this is just good on board. It allows you to snowball and helps you cheese out victories with stuff like Ravaging Ghoul. If you have a big board or your opponent has a big board, you have Frothing on board, and then you use Ravaging Ghoul. You buff your Frothing a lot. And then you go face for the win. Then Corcoran Elite. This card is really good against control decks. Really, really good. Just help them pressure them. It's great against OTK Warrior as well. Just to continuously pressure them. Then Twilight Guardian. This card is very good. It's Ascension Shield Massive plus one health. So who can complain, right? It also has a Dragon Tag on it, which is huge. Then next is Azure Drake. So five mana, four, four. Spell damage plus one. Cycle. It's really, really good. Also a Dragon. And the spell damage does come into play with cards like Blood's Acre and Slam. Well, there's not a lot of a, a huge amount of spells in this deck. It does matter. The next is Blackwing Corruptor, really strong card and one of the, one of the reasons why this deck works so well. You know, five mana, five four, deal three damage is really good. It's very comparable to a Fire Ellie, but again, it does have to be activated by dragons. So always try and keep dragons in your hand for when you have this card. Next is Draconoid Crusher. So I only run this card as a one of. I think it's pretty good if you're trying to finish games against more mid rangey control decks, but I don't like it too much against aggro. But I still think it's really good. Six mana nine nine, even six mana six six is still all right, and it does have the dragon tag. The next is Malkrock. This card is phenomenal as long as you don't get Curse Blade. If you get Curse Blade, then just feels bad, man. But if you get any other weapon, it's really good. Next, Chill Moss. So this is in the deck as a replacement for a one Draconite Crusher again, simply because it's really good against uh, aggro and good in the mirror. I like it a lot. Uh, it's good against OTK Warrior too. That's another reason why I threw it in. But I'd say try it out, and if you don't like it, again, just run two Draconite Crushers. Next, Grom. Grom is a really, really good card. A very good finisher for this deck. If you got Mage Hero Powers activated with your Hero Power for 10 mana, and then you have Blood Takers and Slam to activate it. Even if you don't activate it, 8 mana, 4 damage. It's not great, but it's something. Rag. Rag's a very good finisher against control decks, even mid-range ones. It's not too great against decks like Zoo. really isn't, because you don't want to spend 8 mana to clear a 1-1. One -one. But it's still a great finisher, and I think it's worth uh, including the deck for sure. The next is Deathwing. I'm really on the fence about this card. I think I might want to cut it and run a second Draconite Crusher, simply because it doesn't seem too useful anymore. Everybody knows you're running Deathwing, but when it does work, it's great. You know, you clear your enemy's board if you're behind on board, and it's a last-ditch uh, last effort to win, sorry. So I think the card's fine, but everybody seems to play around it nowadays, unfortunately. Then here are the matchups. Not going to go too in-depth here again in the individual vid videos, which will, again, be in the description. I will talk a lot more about the individual matchups, but I'll just, you know, fly through it here. So Druid, we're pretty favored. Uh, Cthune is more of a 50-50. It's not that great for us, but Token's pretty good, I'd say. It does depend on draws again, and my... My sample size isn't huge, close to 200 games really isn't that much in the grand scheme of things of Hearthstone, but I think it's it kind of represents some matchups, like Druid and Warrior. Hunter, I think we're favored. If you get if you get the War Axe, we definitely do win most of the time, but uh, I think that's a fine matchup. Mage is good as well, Freeze Mage is nice for us, especially if you get the Hunter Hero Power, it's very, very good. Then Paladin, Paladin we're 5-0 and against, can't say too much about that again, because we haven't played too many games. Same with Priest. Priest, there's not much to say. Just play very aggressive, and you usually do win. Rogue. Rogue's kind of tough. I mean, we're 7-4, and four, but I think Rogue definitely does have a chance against this deck if they do draw cards like Backstab SI early, and they do get good saps off. So I think that's definitely something to watch out for. Try not to play into sap if you if you don't have to, I guess. Then Shaman. Our win rate's uh, actually below 50, simply because I played a lot of games where I didn't get War Axe, and again, this is a very War Axe-reliant matchup. If you don't have the War Axe and cards to trade into cards like Totem Gold, then you're going to have a really tough time against Shaman. Also, Execute on Doctor 4 is very, very key here. Then against Warlock, a lot of our wins do come from Zoo Locks, and then a lot of our losses come from Reno Locks. It's the majority of them. I think my win rate against Reno Lock, I'm like 3-6 and six right now, I think. Something like that. So it's not too great. But again, not a huge portion of ladder. And then Warrior. So we're below 50 simply because Cthulhu and Control Warrior. If you don't have a very aggressive start, then yeah, your win rate against them is going to suffer a lot. So you against Cthulhu and Control, you really do want aggressive win rate, uh, an aggressive start, sorry. 
And against Dragon, you really just want to think about how you can answer your opponent's cards. But again, I'll talk about that more in the individual matchups and mulligan videos. And that's about it, guys. So just a little bit about me. I've got Legend a ton of times. I don't really count anymore, but a lot. And if you guys uh, have any business or coaching inquiries, feel free to email me at controltheboard at gmail.com. And if you like the video, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. And yeah, just follow me on Twitch if you like to see my content. I stream four or five times a week. And also follow me on Twitter to know when I am gonna when I am gonna stream, sorry, and when I am posting a video. And I do do daily uploads on YouTube, and I do weekly guides like this. So sorry if there are any slip ups uh, doing this. I try to do it all in one go, make it fast, so you guys don't have to sit here and watch over and over again me speak about certain things. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And again, the individual matchups and mulligan guides will be in the description and were linked earlier below. So thank you guys for checking me out. I appreciate it a lot. Have a good.